Hello and welcome back to Banner Page and our Iron Man Challenge. As you can see right here, we have 48 against 45, and this is basically going to be probably one of the. I'm going to say one of the. Well, yeah, yeah, but probably one of the last times that we will be doing a uh, bandit fight on screen because I have shown quite a few bandit fights, and personally, I feel like I have. I wouldn't say mastered the bandit fight in particular, but I would say that they pose not too much threat anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, me saying this is probably then going to result in my demise. That's usually how it goes. But anyway, I have actually been uh, running around quite a bit, and you can see here that I actually have a new set of throne weapons. These throne weapons right here are insane. These were recommended by someone in the comments, and I absolutely love them. So thank you so much for giving me the idea to go and get these because these are insanely fun to use. They are so, so fun. And, oh yeah, they do blunt damage. They do blunt damage. So you can take any one prisoner that gets hit by these things. And I have leveled up my proficiency so nicely from having 20 of these things to use. And it is insanely fun. It really is. Just look, look, look at how much damage I'm capable of dealing right here. 83 damage, 87, 89, and they're reasonably accurate as well. So they're not laser beams or anything like that. And you, of course, cannot use them from halfway across the map or anything like that. You know, they're not overpowered. They're very solid, blunt, prisoner-taking weapons and absolutely love them. Really, really fantastic. Now, otherwise, what I have done... Oh, yeah, by the way, I found those in Rodok territory. Anyway, what I'll, or what, are, what other things have I done? Well, the other things that I've done have been going to the Weaponsmith. So I went to the Weaponsmith, and I upgraded my mace, because, of course, I've been using the mace for quite some time, and I kind of thought it would make sense for me to have a slightly upgraded version of it so that I can do a little bit of extra damage. And uh, I also purchased a new shield as well. And the shield that I purchased is, in my opinion, really, really good. And I also upgraded that at the Weaponsmith as well. I haven't gotten any new armor, so I am uh, pretty much the same as I was uh, beforehand. And I'm actually unsure what I should really take here. I guess I'll take some Vagia Veterans or something like that. I already have a couple of those. And I guess we'll take a Vagia Archer and maybe a farmer or a skirmisher I'll just take a skirmisher i guess anyway there's a whole bunch of things to take here we have some throwing spears as well and you can see here that i actually did find some jareds which i thought might be quite fun to use and these throwing spears right here are basically the same thing as you can see there's there's eight of them 45 piercing damage 89 speed rating basically the same exact thing which is actually really cool and i will be uh selling these throwing spears or something like that. Now, we do have a helmet. I'm actually unsure why no one has taken the helmet. Oh, there we go. They actually did take the helmet now. Now, you can see here that I actually only have one uh, one set of Greek fire grenades. Now, not entirely sure if I'm going to use these that much in regular fights, but I might use them in siege attacks and so on and so forth because that just makes sense, doesn't it? It just makes a great deal of sense to, uh, you know, get a whole bunch of people killed in the garrison without doing too much and there's only two of them in the stack so I personally feel like it's pretty balanced in that in that respect but obviously there are other things in the mod that you know may not be considered as balanced like for example the explosive arrows or something like that because there's six of them in each stack so you could have two of those or even three if you wanted to and then you could literally have 18 explosive shots which would be quite powerful but Basically, what I've done with the other set is I've given that to Clethy. So Clethy now has a couple of Greek fire grenades that she can potentially use to do some damage. Ah, and there we go. We now have 890 dinars coming to us from the salt mine. All right, so the loot from that previous bandit fight has totaled 1,360, and that's really, really nice. Now, you may be wondering, 
what have you been doing with all your money? Because this is exactly what I've been doing in my off-screen time. I've literally just been, you know, doing the Guild Master Quest, fighting bandits, and uh, basically reinvesting the amount of prisoners that I have in the salt mine, and also reinvesting the money in businesses all over the place. And uh, we're going to be seeing those businesses in action as we go forward, because, of course, you're going to see the, uh, the wages that I gained from those things. And otherwise, we have Lovton here, Yom's Viking. They're pretty good. There's also a Ransom Broker. Technically, I could sell my prisoners to that guy, but I think we're pretty happy to just go and speak to the Guildmaster. So there you go. Deshavi has advanced to level 4, which is really nice too. And another 1,000 Dinars to Renown. Rivercheg Relation has improved as well. And this is the really, really cool thing about this. You can actually ask this guy for another job straight away. And then you can go off and do it without any problems whatsoever. Literally, just straight up. You can just do that if you want to. I'm obviously not going to do that right now because I am going to be attempting something very daring or maybe slightly daring. Anyway, you can see here that uh, the amount of quests that I've done here, I actually did a couple of Guildmaster quests for some of the other towns in the area as well. But basically, I've also been buying a whole bunch of land here. I actually own 14 acres of land in this town. I own, um, I think, four or five in Kudan, and I think I own about two in Kuro or something like that. And uh, I guess we'll just buy another one. Why not? Let's buy another one, and uh, we'll see how that goes, because I now have 4,000 dinars remaining, which is pretty good. And I think I'm pretty happy to move on now. So this is where I am. This is what's currently going on. Not, not much, you know, not much. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking what we're going to do is I would like to try and find the leader. Okay, yeah, this guy's yeah, this guy's gonna leave. That's absolutely fine. No problem, Arty Mena, go go for it. However you want. And uh, what I would like to do is try and find these guys are actually trying to attack me. Can you see that? That's hilarious. Try and find the leader of our faction, if at all possible. So hello, I would like to speak to you. And where up oh, 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 okay, I have enough renown now. Oh, okay, that's actually fantastic. A duel, that sounds like an interesting idea. We could keep score and see who is the better fighter. Uh, I'd like to duel on foot. Let us fight uh, with our own weapons. <laughs> that's not a good idea, but I'm going to do it nevertheless because I think it's going to be fun. That sounds great, I'll meet you there. All right, start the duel. Let's do it. Okay, uh, oh dear. I would have been able to do quite a... Oh, nice, yes, I can I can shield bash. I forgot about that. Shield bash is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Oh, yeah. Take that, Mariga. That is exactly what you get. There you are. So we gain three renown, and we also... Oh, dear. We also lose some rela relation with him, which is actually pretty bad. Okay. Hey, guy. Uh, I actually wanted to ask you where the... Uh, Liege is. Oh, he should be between Slezk Castle and Kuro. That's actually really close by. So hopefully he is round about here. There he is. Fantastic. Let's speak to him. My informants tell me that some of your companions, uh, oh dear, have been telling the peasants that you have a claim to the throne. Well, uh, well, that's just, that's just how it goes. I would like to become a vassal. Yes, there we go. And that is exactly what I want to do. And there is a good reason for this as well, because I would like to be able to potentially capture a castle and then have the claim to that castle, if at all possible. So I will be accepting vassalage here. There you go. We are now the owner of Hanun, a village. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Okay. Can I duel Grand Prince Yaroglek? I think that would be quite fun. It would hardly be fitting for a king to duel a mere soldier like yourself. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, I thought that might be a little bit too much. Do you have any tasks? Uh, no, I'm not going to deliver a letter. Ugh, delivering letters is so annoying. I don't want to do that. Thank you very much. But we are now a uh, proud owner of a fief. I'm actually unsure where it is. Oh, dear. Is it far away? Where is Hanun? I'm not seeing it. Am I blind? No, but I think I might have... Oh, no, there it is. It's all the way over there. Okay, that's actually fine. 
I don't have a problem with that. It's pretty far out of the way, and the Nords are going to have no claim to it whatsoever. They're, they're going to have a very hard time going over there and raiding it, or at least I hope so. Anyway, let's go into the tavern here, because I think I might want to try and find a ransom broker. I know, I know, I, I did... You can find them at Ikema. Okay, there is actually an, a ransom broker at Ikema right now. We might want to go over there really, really quickly. And we might also want to hunt a little bit of yak as well, because we do have some bowlers, and it might be it might be working to use that. Anyway, let's have a look and see what is suitable for an Iron Man uh, in, in terms of the banners that we have here. But we've got some really cool ones, actually. Some very, very nice-looking ones. Uh... I like the I like this one. I actually like this one because it's an iron gauntlet, right? Or steel gauntlet, iron gauntlet, whatever, something like that. So I think that sounds pretty fun to me. All right, let's go on over to Ikima. Now we are going to make a round trip, basically. So what I'm gonna do? <gasps> he's giving me something. I can't believe it. He's actually giving me some armor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh yes, I could definitely use the upgrade. That is very nice of him. I was not expecting that, by any means. Very good. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely going to try and uh, be as good as I can for him. Maybe uh, maybe we'll try to help him out. There's Rolf. He's going to go off and spread the word of how fantastic we are, kind of. Yeah, maybe. Oh, what is this? It's not all gold that shines. During a short but well-deserved rest, you've noticed something shiny on the ground. After taking a closer look, thinking it must be a lucky day, you discovered only a small metallic piece of junk lying in the grass. Unfortunately, totally worthless. This could be a bad sign. Oh, well, thankfully nothing happens as a result of that. Or at least, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does. Not entirely sure. Let's hire a prominent nobleman to help us out. And hopefully the ransom broker is still here. We might actually want to do some battles with some step bandits and things like that once we have sold our prisoners. Because no doubt with my bowlers, I will be able to uh, take quite a few. Yes, there is actually a ransom broker here. That's fantastic. Okay. Hello, uh, belligerent drunk. I'm ready to shield bash you. And you are now dead, sir. Or knocked unconscious at the very least. Okay, so camel archer, ransom broker. There we go. Sell all of the prisoners. Wow, 1,200. That's actually a lot. Very nice. Uh, nice, to, nice to see that. And there's a Nafotun archer here as well. We can hire all of them. That's actually really nice. So there we go. That's that's pretty good. Bear in mind that Nafatun archers and indeed their units are quite fragile. So even if you do get a whole bunch of them, they're still going to die very, very quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other armor options right here. Because as you can see, this armor right here for 10,000 is actually 54 body armor and 19 leg armor. And we have 50 and 15. So I'm actually kind of happy that he gave me some armor. Very, very pleased about that, actually. So let's see if I can find, yes, the armorer. And we are going to refine my uh, my armor. Oh, for 2,400 sure. Okay. Yeah, why not? How much do I have now on this? 52 and 17. So we gained uh, plus 4 armor total, which I suppose is decent enough. You know, decent enough. Not too bad. All right, so let's continue onward. Do I have... Yes, I have increased party capacity now as well because we are a vassal instead of just a mercenary. So I'm actually really, really pleased about that. That is going to make things so much easier for us. And what I do need to do is actually move Borcha all the way up. All the way up here because that's what I've done. I've basically put all the companions that have already gone off and given me right to rule in the top of the army. And I put everyone else in a, a different position so it is a little bit easier for me to know exactly who has been sent off and who hasn't so yeah these step bandits are way way too fast for me by the looks of things but maybe the yak are not so let's see if i can maybe get them into a bit of a bit of a little hunt here because i haven't done that much hunting and i think it would be quite fun to do so okay so hey guys could you uh could you just stop there real quick uh <laughs> Somehow, I, I think that I'm probably not going to be able to do very well here because I don't have a horse. Bear that in mind. I do have a horse, but I didn't really want to. Didn't really want to use it. But look at my armor. I'm looking pretty cool. I'm looking like a proper lord right now. And I haven't actually shown you my shield now either. I do need to do that once we get out of the hunt. 
which is going to be now because I'm never going to never going to get up to those. So this is my shield. I purchased the regular Spartan Hoplon, and then I upgraded it twice. And it literally is so cheap to upgrade shields, or at least it was it was very cheap to upgrade this shield. It basically cost me about 500 dinars total, which is just literally nothing. So I'm very very pleased I was able to do that. Anyway, there's Lesolit. He's come back. Fantastic. Lesolit is a great great companion. And uh, we're going to be sending off the uh, one of the last companions that we can very, very soon. Uh, Borcher is, not having a, uh, is having a problem with the Leon, obviously. They're generally going to have a lot of problems with each other at the moment. But I'm just going to let whoever wants to leave, leave, and then deal with the aftermath of that so that we don't really have to worry too much about it. Okay, so Kelradan Castle, eh? That's the thing. All right, so Borcha, uh, I'm not actually going to be keeping Borcha around, so I'm just going to say, tell Dushav you have my support in this. Borcha can leave if he wants to, and hopefully... Oh, no, everyone is having problems with everyone right now. Yeah, we're just going to leave that the way it is. If, if people want to leave, then they can leave, and uh, we'll just sort it out at a later point. All right, so looters, hello, 68. Okay, I have 57 right now, and I do want to increase... Deshavi's pathfinding and spotting. That is her role in my army at the moment. And let's just increase her archery a little bit. And I'm wondering whether I should replace some of my bowlers with some Greek fire grenades. Might make sense. So that we can just wear down the opponent just a little bit. And let's build some siege equipment. This is going to take 90 hours. Yeah. 90. I mean... The engineering technically does reduce the amount of time that it takes by a pretty significant margin, but still, I really don't like the whole siege equipment taking such a long time to make, but I understand that the engineering skill does make a big difference. So it's my fault for not having Artimena or someone with engineering skill actually in my party. Bear in mind that I do have Yamira now, and uh, I was hopeful that I could find Jeremus. I'm not entirely sure where Jeremus is. I haven't been able to find him for some reason. But hopefully this is not going to take too long. And hopefully we are not going to be attacked by a very large army. So, all right. Yeah, tell Borchi you have my support in this. That is fine. And uh, I'm actually thinking, can I, uh, yes, I can stop at any time. That's great. Okay, another 46 hours. So, yeah, if there is someone that's going to be coming up here, if there's a Nord vassal that appears out of nowhere, I'm going to try and pause the game as soon as possible so that we don't get into a situation where we're fighting King Ragnar himself and he is going to then have, I don't know, 150 units or something like that against us. Another 27 hours it will take. Not too bad, I guess. And, uh... We can just hope that they're not going to then appear out of nowhere with an overwhelming army and just absolutely murder us. But uh, it seems like, no. It seems like we are okay. And uh, how are we doing here? Ah, uh, yes. 412 dinars have been added to the treasury because there is a treasury now. And we have rents coming from our village of 500, which is pretty good. And these are all my enterprises that I have purchased, by the way. So I have ironworks at Kuro and Ravadin. And then I have an oil press at Kudan. That was the most profitable. And then I, of course, have a dye works at Rivercheg. And that seems to be working out quite nicely for me at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. There we go. There's, there's the prisoners giving me a little bit from the salt mine. And Manid is going to be leaving. That's absolutely fine as well. No problem there. And I think we're ready. Aren't we? Three hours. Oh, yes, of course. All right. There we go. Okay. I am prepared. Let's do this. Lead your soldiers in an assault. Bear in mind, my shield is really, really good. It has like 27 resistance or some craziness like that. So I can basically not take that much damage from basically anything, I think. So it should be good. But let's see what happens because these guys are Nords. And Nords are very good with their thrown weapons. And thrown weapons are known for destroying shields relatively fast. Let's get out my grenade and see what I can do with that. I thought it didn't kill anyone for a second. I literally thought it didn't kill anyone, but it actually killed... 28. Okay. Uh, question. What, uh... 
Well, what, what actually happens with that? Because in field battles, the radius and explosiveness is a lot less than what I've just witnessed, which I've got to say is kind of crazy. I, I would not have anticipated that. I actually thought that the radius was the same in both places, but it looks as though that's not the case because I just used the grenade, as you could no doubt tell, <laughs> obviously. You know, the explosion kind of gives things away. Oh, did you see that? We took him down. And, uh, yeah, but anyway, that, uh, that siege, that siege damage is insane. I, okay, I, I guess that's fine. I mean, personally, I don't think that that is really, I, I don't, I, personally, I don't think that's overpowered, okay? Because here's the reason why. I'm going to try and justify this because I like it. <laughs> no, no. The point is, is that I only have two of those things. And let's say that this particular castle had a garrison, a normal garrison of about 150 to maybe 200 units or something like that. And let's say I was attempting to take it with just two grenades. I could have four or I could have six, dependent on if you get lucky and find a large bag of the grenades or whatever. But the point is, is that it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to kill 300 units with, uh, well, 150 to 200 units even, with about four grenades. I don't think you're going to be able to do that. So even if you severely weaken the garrison, you're still going to be outnumbered by a pretty significant margin. Because let's, let's face it, I literally only have 57 units. And if I was actually up against, uh, you know, a huge amount of people with 57 units, I would need a little bit of assistance. You know, I'd need a grenade or two to uh, thin out the opponent. And the thing is, is that I'm not actually in a situation where I am abusing the whole explosion thing, because while I wanted to try it out, because this is actually the first time that I'm trying it out in a siege, and it actually went remarkably well, mind you, but the thing is, is that if I hadn't done that, I still probably would have been able to achieve a victory, but it would have just been a little bit more difficult. So it just makes things a little bit simpler. But obviously, as I say, in this situation, with this many units in the garrison, it's a pretty easy steamroll. But if you imagine a town, because I've seen Sargoth recently and Tyr, they both have 300 or so units in there. You think you're going to be able to kill that many with, with, that, with, with, those, with those grenades? Maybe if you, had, if you took like, I don't know, all of your grenades, uh, just just had like a huge amount of grenades in your baggage or something, or in your inventory, and then just use them like that, then sure, you might be able to kill, I mean, I killed 28 there, so let's say that I, uh, let's say I kill 30 every single time I use a grenade, so if you have four of those things, that's 120 units, but then you still have another 180 to deal with, so I wouldn't say that it is overpowered but I would say that it is very strong so it's up to you if you want to use it that's the point you know uh, I think the mod creator actually did say to a couple of people hey you know what yeah it's a powerful item but you can decide whether you want to use it you know you don't have to use it you don't have to uh, make yourself strong or or weak or whatever you can play the game how you want to play it and that's the really cool thing about sandbox games in my opinion and even more about banner page because I am growing to like it even more than I already did. And it's just crazy because if you think about it, if I am awarded this castle, I think my, uh, I think my uh, army capacity is going to go up even more. And at that point, I'm going to be able to have an army that is about 100 strong. And then I might actually be able to take a town or something like that, which would be really, really fun. But anyway, Katrine, Elayan, they've all leveled up. That's fantastic. And we now have to wait a little bit of time for uh, Kelrodan Castle to be awarded to someone. So hopefully it will be awarded to us. But I am actually thinking that on the one hand, maybe I don't want it to be awarded to us because it is going to result in a potential problem. Hello, Thane Harold. I'm actually wondering whether I should just attack this guy straight up. Uh, you, you know what? I think I am actually going to attack him straight up on the field of battle rather than wait for him 
to go into a siege. Because if he goes into the siege, it is going to be more than likely that, yeah, yeah, sure, we, you know, we can use our grenades and stuff like that. But it's going to be more than likely that other vassals are going to be appearing out of nowhere. So I'm just going to replace the Greek fire grenade for the moment because I much prefer having additional bolas to use, amusingly enough. You ever thought I'd say that? You know, taking away a very powerful weapon, uh, which admittedly doesn't have that many uses, but the point is, is that, you know, taking away a very powerful weapon to use a less powerful weapon, but something that I personally feel is more useful in this particular situation. And that's the point, you know, you can decide what you want to do in any situation you like. And you don't have to use those grenades. If you want to be the most efficient you can be, then yeah, obviously you can. But personally, I don't have a problem with it. It just adds more player choice. And I think that that is a big strength of banner page and mods in general. Because obviously, if you're playing a game you know, like Warband. And let's say you're playing Native, you know. Native doesn't have that much choice in regards to what you want to use. So like, let's say you want to use a, a ranged weapon. What are you going to use? Bow, regular arrows, crossbow, regular bolts, and then thrown weapons. And yeah, you've got a, a little bit more, uh, you've got a little bit more uh, variety in the amount of, uh, in the amount of uh, thrown weapons that you can use. But in general, you're not really going to be you know, you're not really going to be seeing a huge amount of different variety, but I really love the variety that we're seeing in, in here. I think it's a lot of fun to see that. I am actually having a lot of units with uh, fire arrows and grenades and stuff like that, so that might also be a reason that we're doing quite nicely right here. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Because I'm using my bowlers, I haven't actually hit anyone yet, which I'm really sad about, personally. Can I kill that guy? No. Can I kill this guy? No. Can I take damage? Yep. Alright, yeah, well, let's just shield bash this guy. Try and take him down. The shield bash is so, so good. I absolutely love this shield bash. Bravo, mod creator. You have added my favorite shield bash into banner page. Because usually, whenever I have used a a uh, shield bash in the past. So like, for example, I think in Britain Walder has a shield bash and I think in a couple of other mods have uh, the shield bash. It just doesn't work as I would like it and it actually makes things much harder for me. So I never end up using the, the ability to shield bash. But in this, I feel like I can use it and actually be useful, you know? I feel like I can use it in a way that will actually benefit me instead of using it in a way that will end up getting me killed. So, bravo, absolutely love the shield bash. It is a fantastic thing. And, and, and look at this, it has, it, it's just so good. It, it is really, really powerful, very much liking it. And I should definitely use the shield bash in tournaments as well. Tournaments are going to be super, super fun if I just go with a sword and shield or something like that. And I maybe go for like a free-for-all kind of situation where everyone is fighting against everyone. And then I think I'll probably do quite well if I can go into a one versus one situation. Now this guy did manage to escape, but that is to be expected. Nothing really to be uh, too surprised at there. And I'm just going to replace these guys and get the veteran archers instead. Okay, so what else do we have going on here? Nothing much for me. So we'll just let all our people take uh, some upgrades and stuff like that. And there we go. All right, so Tin has advanced to level eight, which is really nice. And Yamira has come back. That is great. And Katrina is going to be leaving. That's absolutely fine as well. No problem there. And there you go. So we've taken Karadan Castle. A little bit of discussion about the whole grenades thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can see my, my side of things as well, because I'm basically just saying that it's all down to player choice and player personal preference. And that's what's great about sandbox games. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.